Hello and welcome. Uh, I'm John McCormack and I'm making this video to accompany my blog post about locks, blocks and deadlocks. Uh, the terms themselves can be quite confusing at first and they're often used uh, incorrectly and interchangeably. Um, so the point of this post is just to really describe the basics of what each term means um, rather than deep diving into any one uh, specific term. So you'll be able to find lots of detailed information out there on blocking, deadlocks and locks. But the point of this is just to set you on the right path so that you know the difference between uh, the three different things that are going to be described here. So as a DBA, I, I often hear uh, something like, John, can you clear the deadlocks? We've got locks at the moment. And it's probably not really the fault of the person that's telling it, uh, telling me. They just think that those terms are, are all pretty much the same. They know that something's going slow. They're probably describing blocking, which is one of the things that we're going to cover here. So um, let's have a click through and see <clears throat> what the difference is between blocks, blocks, and deadlocks. So the first thing to say about locks is they're absolutely essential for an RDBMS system. Um, so all the transactions need to request locks and be granted them. Um, if we go by the SQL Server's default settings, then if data has been read, then it can't be modified and kind of vice versa. Now, there are ways round about this. Uh, some of them are really useful. Some of them are, are not ideal and really suboptimal. Uh, some lock types can happily coexist. So if you look at the link here on the presentation, which is in the which is in the blog post, uh, you can see a, a chart with all the different lock types um, that can be requested in SQL Server and whether or not those lock types can exist happily alongside uh, each other. Some of them, however, are incompatible. So if they are incompatible, then what has to happen is the first uh, transaction, which has the lock, has to complete um, before the next transaction um, can acquire the lock that it needs to get its business done. So that needs to be committed or rolled back. Uh, the, the full transaction has to happen, which is essentially part of what ACID means. It's an atomic transaction. Um, so if that hasn't fully completed, what's probably going to happen is that you're going to see uh, delayed uh, transactions and that manifests itself in what we call blocking. So the person who told you about the problem, who said, uh, can you clear all the deadlocks or the locks, whatever, um, they were probably describing blocking, as I said. And blocking occurs when the locks are incompatible and have not uh, completed. So most blocking is very short term. Um, and it's a result of concurrent transactions. So in the real world outcome of incompatible lock types being requested concurrently, um, it's usually only very short lived. So we're talking microseconds or possibly milliseconds, uh, in some cases, maybe into the low number of seconds. In most of these circumstances, um, that's not really a big problem, okay? So uh, the blocking's to be expected, it's a way that the uh, SQL Server system is managing the, the consistency of the data uh, within it. So the problem appears when blocking becomes like a really big issue is when the, the blocking isn't just for a matter of milliseconds or microseconds, but when it runs into seconds, large numbers of seconds and even minutes. <clears throat> so how do we fix this and uh, how do we identify what is actually involved in the blocking? Um, so I use SP Who is Active, which is a free of charge store procedure written by Adam Mechanic. Uh, the link is on the blog post. It's, it's available to download free of charge from his GitHub. Um, so you can inspect the code before you install it. Um, I believe it's perfectly safe. It's been used for, for decades now. Uh, it's constantly being updated, but it's been used by thousands of DBAs around the world. But if you want, have a have a read through the code before you use it. But it's an extremely useful store procedure because it helps you get to the issue very, very quickly. Um, if it's not just a one-off incident, if the same queries are showing up in your blocking time and time again, then you're going to have to look at tuning them. So whether that's tuning the queries, making sure that you have the appropriate indexes in place, 
<clears throat> and sometimes you may actually have to review the isolation level uh, that you use. So the final thing is deadlocks. Um, deadlocks are, so I've said here, either he leaves or I leave. It's, it's a situation where no one's going to give way. <clears throat> so SQL Server has to choose a victim. Um, <clears throat> so what we mean by that <clears throat> is if there are two transactions which have incompatible lock types with each other, then the cheapest transaction to roll back is usually uh, made the victim. Now, this can lead to data loss. So if the victim is doing some kind of insert, update, or delete operation, then that whole transaction is rolled back, meaning that it's lost. If it was just reading data, then you would need to do the, do the select again or <clears throat> get the application or report to run again uh, in order to get the, the data back uh, that you need. Um, <clears throat> to identify past events, I use uh, SP Blitzlock uh, from Brent Ozar's first responder kit. Again, that's another completely free of charge uh, stored procedure um, that you can review the code and install in your system once you're, you're happy with it. Um, this is particularly good if you want to look back over a fixed period of time, like show me all the, the deadlocks in the last 24 hours. And you can build up some patterns if you're getting a lot of deadlocks. Um, it may be the same groups or multiple groups of queries that are involved in these deadlocks. And that will give you a start with what you need to go and start tuning and improving um, to, to avoid the, the future deadlocks. Um, if you need more real-time information, then something like extended events is going to be the way that you're going to be able to get that out of the system um, in a much more timely fashion. So now that we've covered the three terms of uh, locks, blocks, and deadlocks, or locking, blocking, and deadlocking, hopefully we know how to use them correctly now. What I would like to do is show you an example of blocking, and that will also give us some lock information as well. So I'm going to dive into Management Studio now to show you an example of blocking, and we'll also look at the type of locks that are requested that have caused the blocking. Um, so let's have a look at that um, using the examples that are listed on the blog post. So here we are in the first query. This should have been a really simple query. Uh, the person wanted to update the name of a customer to Spintail Toys Head Office. If we look at the next tab before we run that one. We can see that it's currently called Spintail Toys HO. So all they want to do is just expand that HO to say Head Office just to make things a little bit uh, clearer when it comes up in the, in the application. So they go to run the transaction. Now, they use a begin transaction, which means that it won't automatically commit. So we have an open transaction. It went through immediately. So normally, you would be thinking, well, that was an immediate transaction. It won't be blocking anything um, because it's, it's completed. But the fact that we haven't committed it specifically means that it's open and that it should ideally uh, cause some blocking in here. So here we are in query two, and we just want to read all the customers, or rather, just the customer, all the details of customer ID one. If we run this through, then we can see that we're not getting the data back that we would hope. It's only looking for one row. It's, it's using the ID value. It should be extremely quick, um, but something is stopping this. So <clears throat> in most applications, you might see a default timeout of something like 30 seconds. Um, the users would be expecting this to return almost instantly. Um, so once they're waiting for a few seconds, they think something's not quite right, the system's slow, and when they hit the kind of 30 second mark, it may even uh, prompt an error on their screen. So you're getting the report that there's slowness in the database um, and what's the issue. So you come in here and you want to run this um, SP who is active that I mentioned earlier. And you want to run it with the find block leaders and the get locks uh, parameters. Uh, find block leaders is extremely handy if there's loads of blocking going on all over the place. It will let you know which <clears throat> transaction is at the head of that. Um, and sometimes um, getting that killed, if that's indeed necessary, will, will clear the rest of the blocking. And the get locks just shows you which transactions are, <clears throat> sorry, which locks are being uh, requested or taken at any point in time. So we can see that this begin transaction here 
That started 1 minute 33 seconds ago, and the select started 1 minute and 5 seconds ago. Okay, so um, it's kind of been blocked for the full 1 minute and 5 seconds because it can't do what it needs to do. Um, so all that it wants here is a shared lock. Okay, that's what that lock type is, and you can easily Google that. Um, to find out what all the <clears throat> what all the different lock types are, um, but it can't get that shared lock at the moment, which means that there must be an incompatible lock type which is causing the blocking. So we know um, from in here that it's session 75 that's causing the blocking. So just scrolling along here and looking at this locks <clears throat> uh, data, it's going to give us some data in XML format. And it will show us uh, all the locks that have been requested and, and granted in here. Um, now, here we can see on this uh, customers table, on the primary key, there's been ex an exclusive lock granted. Okay, so there's been an exclusive lock granted there on the primary key. That's kind of the only thing that we need to know for now. If we want to look at the locks for um, the select query, and there's a shared lock uh, requested, and it's currently in the status of waiting. And that's going to stay the same um, until something uh, resolves here. Now, this isn't going to cause a deadlock because it is expected that the first transaction will um, complete at some time once someone takes the, the necessary action. And in fact, if we do go in here and commit this, if you just look where that says executing in tab two, if I go in here and commit this, then you can see that in tab two, it's immediately gone from executing to being completed. And as you can see, it's giving us the up-to-date uh, information, Spintail Toys with the full head office name. It hasn't given us any uh, incorrect data, um, but it had to wait on that data being committed before it would allow the data uh, to be selected. So that concludes the, the short video to accompany the blog post on locks, blocks, and deadlocks. I hope that's been useful. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the, the comments below. Thank you.